Hello all, welcome back to another video. For this video, we will be walking through how we can bypass the latest Windows Defender with C++. As shown in the screen, we will be using this GitHub repository and making use of the source code available in this project over here. So in this project, there are a lot of useful references and we will be showing how we can make use of it to bypass Windows Defender. On my channel, there is a playlist specifically on bypassing Windows Defender most of it will not work anymore. Whenever a tool or technique gets publicized like this, Windows Defender will be quick to pick it up and build detection around it to prevent it from working. The goal of sharing all of this knowledge and tools is to create awareness and hopefully you will be able to build your own custom loader that can bypass Windows Defender. There are many useful references showed in this playlist, so be sure to check them out. This is one of them in C Sharp. Alright, let's get back to the video. So as shown in the screen, this is our Windows 10 machine. This is fully updated and all of the features and protections are turned on. And also there are no exclusions configured. This will be our target Windows 10 machine that we will be testing our payload on. The very first project is just a simple loader which will execute shellcode into memory directly. So it, this is very typical, it uses virtual alloc to allocate some memory and then it will move the shellcode into the memory following which it will use virtual protect to change the memory permissions to execute and read. Initially it is only read and write because we will only need to move the shellcode into the memory space but since we are going to execute the shellcode it is necessary to change the permission to allow execution and subsequently the shellcode in the memory will then be executed. This is the standard process injection technique. So let's copy the code and paste it over to our Kali machine. Let's generate a TCP reverse shell using MSF Venom. So this is the byte array that is generated and we will need to paste it over into the source code. We will need to change the name of the variable as well to match the remaining of the source code. So let's change it to payload. We are going to compile the C++ code on our Kali machine. It will be cross compilation and we can use the MingW compiler to do so. We will need to change the Windows W from capital to small letter and this should fix the error. Awesome. Now we have the exe payload file. Let's transfer it over to our Windows 10 machine and see if it works. This should definitely trigger a detection because there is a raw shellcode in the source code itself. As expected, Windows Defender was able to pick it up. Let's hop over to our Kali machine and modify the code. Let's clear out the payload and set it to something non-malicious. Let's recompile the source code again. As shown in the screen, there is no detection now. What this means is that the process injection technique used in the source code is fine. It is not detected by Microsoft Defender. However, the MSF Venom generated payload is being detected. Let's remove the getchar function so that it will not wait for user input. Let's try and recompile it again and transfer it to our Windows 10 machine. Okay, so it works. We are able to transfer the file and execute the file. So the technique used for the process injection is definitely okay. It's just that the payload is being detected. Now let's take a look at another project available in this GitHub project. There is this fileless shellcode.cpp and basically what this does is to create a Windows socket and it will fetch the payload remotely from a HTTP server instead of having the payload hardcoded into the source code of the program. Since we already have a working process injection technique from the simple loader source code, we will only need the function that will help us download the payload file remotely from a server. So this is the get shellcode run function. Let's copy the get shellcode run function and paste it into our source code file.
we will also need to include all of the necessary header files as well as the libraries. Let's copy and paste all the necessary lines into our code. We will also need to copy the main function. So the main function will execute the get shellcode run function and our original main function, we will need to copy all of it and paste it into the part whereby it will execute the shellcode. So this is the run shellcode function. We don't need this run shellcode function. We will use our original process injection technique that we have verified that is not detected by Windows Defender. Let's replace the run shellcode function with our own process injection technique instead. So the receive buffer is our payload variable. Let's change all of our payload variable to match the receive buffer variable name. What this means is that our program now will fetch the payload remotely from a HTTP server directly into memory and execute it instead of having the payload as a byte array in the source code file directly. Let's give it a try. It seems that we are missing the default buff length definition. We should be able to fix this error by including it. Let's do that. Let's check out this error. It seems that we are missing some compilation flags to include the socket library into the program. Let's do that. Alright, we managed to fix the error. There are only warnings now which we can just disregard. We are able to generate our template.exe payload file. Now, let's transfer it over to our Windows machine and see if it works. As shown in the screen, there is no detection from Windows Defender. We are able to execute the template payload file as well. Now, let's generate our payload file. We will need to output our payload generated by MSF Venom into a file. Let's name it beacon.bin. Let's set up the listener on port 8443. We will also need to set up a web server so that our template payload file can download the beacon.bin payload file from the web server. We can do it with Python. Let's execute it. We will need to specify the web server port which is 8000 as well as the name of the payload file which is beacon.bin. As shown in the screen, we are able to successfully get a reverse shell with Windows Defender all turned on. This is pretty impressive. We are able to bypass Windows Defender by making use of publicly available source code and mixing it together. Oh no, after executing some commands, it seems that Windows Defender is able to pick it up. This is very likely because we are using a reverse TCP shellcode instead of an encrypted HTTPS payload. We can try and bypass this detection by making use of HTTPS payload instead. This means that the traffic sent and received by the reverse shell will be encrypted instead. This will very likely help to bypass Windows Defender. Let's try and do that. We can generate a HTTPS encrypted payload file with MSF Venom. Let's execute MSF console and set the payload to the Metapreter HTTPS encrypted payload channel. As shown in the advanced option, we should be able to set our handler SSL cert to something custom. One problem with using the Metapreter Reverse HTTPS payload is that the default Metasploit web server that is started by this payload is heavily signatured by Windows Defender. One way that we can bypass this detection is to create our own self-signed SSL certificate and use that instead of the default Metasploit SSL certificate. It should be quite straightforward to create our own SSL certificate. We are able to create our own PEM SSL certificate. Now, let's set our Metapreter payload to use our own self-created certificate instead of the default Metasploit one. This should be able to help us bypass detection. We will also need to set the stager to verify the SSL certificate. We can set it to true. We are now using our own self-signed, self-created SSL certificate instead of the default Metasploit certificate. When we are generating the payload with MSF Venom, we will also need to specify the handler SSL cert option as well as the stager verify SSL cert option. We will need to make some changes to our source code and recompile it so that the checksum of the file will be different since Microsoft Windows Defender was able to pick it up previously. Alright, now let's recompile it.
Let's transfer the template exe file over to our Windows machine. Now let's try and execute our Metaprinter reverse HTTPS payload file. Weird, that didn't work. Oh no, there is a typo. It should be port 8000 instead of 8443 because that is where our Python web server is running, hosting the beacon.bin payload file. Let's execute it again. Awesome! We are able to get a working Metaprinter reverse shell. This is great. As shown in the screen, there is no detection on our Windows Defender. We are also able to perform a quick scan to verify that it is indeed bypassing Windows Defender completely. Now, the moment of truth. Let's execute some commands to see if it works. Awesome! We are able to execute the get UID command and we can see that this is indeed a functional Metaprinter reverse shell. This is great. Let's hop over to our Windows 10 machine. There is still no detections and no alerts. We have successfully bypassed Windows Defender, obtaining a Metaprinter reverse shell. This is possible by using publicly available references as well as creating our own self-signed SSL certificate used by the Metaprinter reverse HTTPS payload. All of the references used in this video will be provided in the video's description, so be sure to check it out. It is highly recommended to go through the references. You should be able to build your own custom bypass by mixing the files and maybe even creating your own function within the source code. I hope you all have enjoyed the video. Please help to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It will really help out the channel a lot. Thanks all. I will see you all soon in the next video. Bye.